Of all the things civilization beyond Earth's first expansion accomplishes, the greatest is this. It sorts through centuries of war, politics, and civic progress to reveal the personality hidden beneath it all. Developer Fair Axis Games has a reputation for making bold expansions, and Rising Tide is no exception. It doesn't just add content to this sci-fi strategy game. It reimagines certain systems altogether and brings real characters into the formula. As in Beyond Earth proper, Rising Tide puts you in the throne, or council chamber, depending on the leader you choose to be, as you guide your civilization to victory on alien planets in the distant future. Although there are still five paths to victory, both peaceful and otherwise, the methods of reaching them have changed because Rising Tide lets you colonize the seas. So while naval combat and exploration are still key factors in any smart ruler's strategy, this expansion brings cities, complete with all their commerce, resources, and hardworking people, into the waves. And in Rising Tide, ocean cities can move. It takes a few turns, depending on the city's production rating, but these floating metropolises can travel across water, one hexagonal tile at a time, in any direction you choose. The result is a brilliant new dichotomy between your thinking on land and your approach at sea. And because citizens can still only work tiles within three spaces of the nearest city, building a seafaring province means dealing with loss. Short-term games are far more valuable at sea, where resources are ephemeral, and cities might abandon farms, generators, and academies in an instant. Rising Tide also introduces a new diplomacy system. You strike international deals, manage alliances, and change your leader's personality traits by spending diplomatic capital. Other leaders will, in turn, come to fear or respect you. Build up a big enough army, and they'll accept your deals out of awe. But manage your civ with a wise leader's acumen, and surrounding dignitaries will join out of admiration. This diplomacy system erases two complaints I had with Beyond Earth proper. First, it adds dynamism to the mid-game turns, which used to be boring if you weren't always expanding. But this feature does something more. It injects personality into Beyond Earth. The leaders develop unique idiosyncrasies, growing into angry tyrants or peaceful visionaries. And after a while, I developed opinions about each one of them. However, it's often unclear why a ruler approves or disapproves of your actions. This is important because their thoughts affect their standing toward you. At one point, Brasilia's leader scoffed at my production rates, only to compliment them once I raised them a mere two points higher. Rising Tide didn't offer a quantitative explanation for why this was the case. There can also be an overload of information farther into games when every ruler sounds off on every move I make. But these characters still feel genuine. This isn't the level of characterization you'll find in a role-playing game or story-driven experience, but these personalities did influence my decisions. Rising Tide brings new hybrid affinity units, old world artifacts, and four new factions to Beyond Earth. You can also find resource pods and alien ruins filled with useful materials across the map. But these welcome additions pale in comparison to the systemic changes Firaxis has made. There are several bothersome issues with the new diplomacy approach, and some of these mechanics still seem too arbitrary to call excellent. But Rising Tide encourages new ways of thinking and lends new character to a game in dire need of it. And of course, that old civilization mantra still echoes just like it used to. One more turn. <laughs>